welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन the avyayi bhava samasa the bahuvrihi samasa and the dvandva samasa right now we are studying the avyayi bhava samasa avyayi bhava samasa is an extremely important type of samasas in sanskrit and the structure of this samasa can be represented in the form of a simple equation mention on this particular slide if you have x and y both independent entities separate entities in terms of word form as well as meaning as well as accent the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them and generates the compounded entity called xy now the input was two units independent and separate yet interrelated output is one unit which is made up of the input units however the output is related to the input it still works as or functions as one unit so that when this output is used in the sentence it will be used as one unit now to show the interrelation of the constituents with the generated output we have used the bold characters and we have made x as bold which indicates that when this x y is used in the sentence x acts as its head in terms of the word form as well as the meaning also this samasa is called avyayi bhava and invariably x is an avyaya and so avyayi bhava samasa is also termed as an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavasch this is how avyaya determines the overall formal nature of xy and also the meaning of x which is an avyaya which plays an important role in determining the function of xy as one unit these are some of the features of the avyayi bhava samasa in the ashtadhyayi the avyayi bhava samasa is treated in various sections the samasa vidhayaka sutra namely the compound prescribing sutras they are stated in 2.1 specifically from 2.1.5 onwards up to 2.1.21 and 2.1.21 is anyapadarthecha saudnyayam 
this is a small section of rules which prescribes the conditions for an avyayi bhava samasa to take place. Incidentally, 2122 is tatpurushaha and the tatpurusha samasa is prescribed from 2122 onwards, which we have already dealt with in the first course on samasa. Now, from 54107 up to 54112, this is another small section in which the Samasanta Pratyaya is stated. So these are the sutras stating or prescribing the Samasanta Pratyaya. So they are called Samasanta Pratyaya Vedhayaka Sutra. And then there are some sutras which talk about the Swara of the Avyayabhava Samasa. For example, 62.121. Right now, we are studying the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras stated in 2.1. We have already studied some sutras earlier, starting with Avyayi Bhavaha and Avyayam Vibhakti, etc. And now we are focused on 2.113, which is Ang Maryadabhi Vidhyoho. Ang Maryadabhi Vidhyoho. There are two padas in the sutra. Ang as well as Maryadabhi Vidhyoho. Ang is 1 slash 1 of Ang. So this Prathama Vibhakti ensures that this word Ang gets the term Upasarjana and then by the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam this term Ang occupies the initial position in the Samasa. The second pada in the sutra is Maryadabhi Vidhyoho. This is 7 slash 2. It means in the sense of. In the sense of Maryada and Abhividhi. Maryada and Abhividhi. Now, both Maryada and Abhividhi denote boundaries. They are different subtypes of boundaries with some difference as far as the shade of the meaning is concerned, which we shall see in a while. And this Maryada as well as Abhividhi is stated to be the meaning of Ang. So Ang denotes these two meanings. Ang also denotes some other meanings, but when only these two are stated, Ang, as far as this Sutra is concerned, gets compounded. So the meaning Maryada and Abhividhi acts as the semantic condition for this Avyayabhava Samasa with Ang which is an Avyaya to take place. So what is Maryada? Maryada is a boundary but what you mention is not included as boundary. So it is a boundary without Tena Vina. For example, we may say that Bangladesh is the eastern boundary of India and Bangladesh is obviously not India. So Tena Vina and Abhividhi is a boundary which is within. So Tena Saha. In the same context we can say as the West Bengal is an eastern boundary state of India. Now West Bengal is part of India and it is part of the eastern India. It is also on the boundary but it is part of India. So when we say Abhividhi, we are referring to a boundary which is part of it. So probably we are referring to West Bengal which is part of India and when we intend to denote the meaning Maryada, Tena Vina, we say like Bangladesh is the eastern boundary of India. These are the concepts of Maryada and Abhividhi. This is an explanation, nuanced explanation 
of the concept of boundary. Now, there are some words which are continued in this sutra from the previous one. Avyayam is continued from 216. Sahasupa, two words are continued from 214. Samasaha is continued from 213. Avyayi Bhavaha is continued from 215. Samarthapada Vidhi is continued from 211. Vibhasha is continued from 211. And Panchamya is continued from 212. Having put all these words and their meanings together, the meaning of the sutra emerges in the following manner. An avyaya subandha, ang, which is a, actually, in the sense of maryada and abhiviti, is compounded with another semantically related subandha, ending in panchami optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava i repeat an avyaya subanta avyayam sub ang and the word ang is taken from the sutra itself and ang means a the preverb or upasarga a just as you have it in gachati and agachati this a is the ang in the sense of maryada and abhividhi maryada abhividhyo is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta samarthena subantena sah ending in panchami panchamya optionally vibhasha and the resultant samasa samasah is called avyayi bhava avyayi bhavah Now, in this case, we must note that there are these following two sutras, which also play an important role in the understanding of the meaning of two one thirteen, and they are two three ten and one four eighty seven together. The application of these two sutras forms a precursor, forms forms a base for the application of. Two one thirteen. Now, what does two three ten say? Panchami apang paribhi. Our focus is on ang. So this sutra says that the fifth triplet, that is panchami vibhakti, is to be added after the words associated with upper ang and pari. These are the three preverbs or upasargas. and then they assume the status of karma pravachaniya and since and once they become karma pravachaniya 2310 applies and adds pancham vibhakti with the word associated with upper ang and pari now the sutra which states the karma pravachaniya saudnya to ang is the following 1487 ang maryada bhi vidyo ho now this sutra says that the word ang is termed karma pravachaniya when the sense of boundary is denoted so we have the following example so when the meaning to be conveyed is til patali putra with pataliputra excluding something existed and as we shall see a pataliputram vrishto devaha that's the example what it means is it rained till pataliputra and pataliputra is not included that means it didn't rain in pataliputra so pataliputra is excluded but it still acts as a boundary So this is an example where ang is used in the sense of maryada. So we have a patali putrat as the laukika vigraha, and then the alaukika vigraha is a plus su plus patali putra plus nasi. 
and then we get the samasa saudhnya and then we get the pratipadika saudhnya after which we apply 2471 and then we delete both the sups so su and nasi are deleted so we have a plus 0 plus pataliputra plus 0 and then we join them together and then we get the samasa output a pataliputra now this avyayi bhava samasa is an avyaya and now we add the suffix su after it so we have a pataliputra plus su since a pataliputra is an avyayi bhava samasa it is an avyaya and therefore this su should be deleted by the sutra avyayadap supaha but since a pataliputra ends in short a we have an exception that we are, have already studied now vyayi bhavad atom tva panchamya this sutra says that if an avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a then the su suffix added after it is not deleted rather it is substituted by am so we have a pataliputra plus am and then the sandhi takes place and we get the form a pataliputram and we use it in the sentence in the following manner we say a pataliputram vrushto devaha a pataliputram vrushto devaha it rained till pataliputra with pataliputra excluding so it didn't rain in pataliputra but pataliputra forms the boundary of a region in which the rainfall happened so in the sense of maryada ang is compounded here now let us look at the example of abhividhi when the meaning to be conveyed is till the boys the laukika vigraha which conveys this sense is a kumarebhya so we have a sentence a kumaram yashaha paninehe the fame of panini has reached till the boys and including these boys now here is the sense of abhividhi an expression which denotes the border with inclusion we have akumare bhya as the laukika vigraha and then this is converted into an alaukika vigraha a plus su plus kumara plus bhyas and so we have the samasa saudhnya taking place and then we have the pratipadika saudhnya taking place and then the sutra supadhatu pratipadika yoga applies which deletes both the sups so we have a plus 0 plus kumara plus 0 and so we get a kumara as the finally derived compound output now after this a kumara when we use it in the sentence we add the suffix su so we have akumara plus su and now akumara is an avyayi bhava samasa so it becomes avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha and then when akumara plus su happens this su should get deleted by avyayad apsupaha but there is an exception which says that if the avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a then this su is substituted by am and so we have akumara plus am as the next step and when we join them together by sandhi we get the output in the form of akumaram and then we use it in the sentence like akumaram yashaha paninehe the fame of panini has reached the boys the boys including that means each and every boy knows who panini is so to take a recap a patali putram rishto devaha this is the sentence in which a denotes the sense of maryada and there are some other examples like a mukti samsara amukti samsara now this is a typical vedantic examples which says samsara exists till you have not obtained liberation so when you obtain liberation 
you leave the samsara. Unless and until you leave the samsara, it is not possible to obtain liberation. So samsara is excluded from mukti. This is maryada. Now because this samasa is governed by the adhikara vibhasha, we also get the same sense even by the sentence. So amukti samsaraha is one expression and amuktehe where both of them are not compounded, they both are able to express the same meaning amukti samsaraha, amuktehe samsaraha. Similarly, akumaram yashap paninehe in this case, R denotes the sense of abhividhi. The other example of this is abalam hari bhakti hi, where hari bhakti is so famous that it has also reached a bala, a child, including that means even a child who has not gained too much maturity is also a devotee of hari, a balibhya and abalam hari bhakti hi. This is what is stated by this particular sutra. Amukti samsaraha, amuktehe, and abalam and abalebhya. Now, let us move ahead and study 2114. And the sutra is Lakshanena Abhiprati Abhimukhe. There are three padas in the sutra, Lakshanena, which is in Tritiya Ekavachana, Abhiprati, which is in Prathamad Vivachana, and Lakshanena and Abhimukhe, and Abhimukhe, this is in 7.1. So Lakshanena means three one of Lakshana, and Lakshana means a mark or sign with a Suvanta word, which indicates this particular meaning. Abhiprati is 1 slash 2 of Abhiprati, the avyayas Abhi and Prati, thus mentioned in a compounded form. And because Abhiprati are mentioned in Prathama Vibhakti, it gets termed as Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and then it occupies the initial position of the Samasa by the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam. We have another word Abhimukhye, which is in 7 slash 1 and what it means is in the sense of facing towards Abhimukhasya Bhavaha Abhimukhyam. The words continued are Avyayam from 216, Sahasupa from 214, Samasaha from 213, Avyayi Bhavaha from 215, Samartha Padavidhihi from 211, and Vibhasha from 2111. All this put together, we get the meaning of the Sutra in the following manner. An Avyaya Subanta, Abhi and Prati is compounded with another semantically related Subanta, which indicates a mark or sign, and when the meaning facing towards is denoted optionally. And the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, an avyaya subanta, avyayam subantam, abhi and prati, abhi prati is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta, samarthena subantena saha samasyate, which indicates a mark or sign, lakshana bhutena or lakshanena, when the meaning facing towards abhi mukhe is denoted. And this happens optionally, vibhasha, and the resultant samasa, samasaha, is called avyayi bhava, avyayi bhavaha. This is the meaning of 2113. Let us now take an example. When the meaning to be conveyed is towards fire as a mark, that means something is happening around a place whose sign or mark is fire. Where there is fire, this is happening. So fire becomes a mark for somebody to explain the location of a particular thing. So 
we have agnim abhi as the laukika vigraha and then we have abhi plus su plus agni plus am as the alaukika vigraha then the samasa saudhnya takes place then the pratipadika saudhnya takes place then we apply the sutra 2471 supodhatu pratipadika yoho and we delete both the sups ag- abhi plus zero plus agni plus zero and then we delete the sups and bring together the purva pada and the uttara pada that is abhi agni and apply the sandhi rule and we get abhyagni now this is a pratipadika we add the suffix su after it so we have abhyagni plus su and here now navi bhavad atom pancham yaha doesn't apply because this avay bhava samasa does not end in short a then by the sutra avyayad aap supaha the su gets deleted and so we have just abhyagni as the subant form of abhyagni it is used in the sentence abhyagni shalabha patanti the moths are falling towards where fire is so fire is the lakshana fire is the mark of the action of falling of these moths now we go to the next sutra now we go to the next example which is towards fire as a mark which is the same meaning and the same meaning is expressed by the laukika vigraha agnim prati the alaukika vigraha is prati plus su because prati is an avyaya and this prati is mentioned in prathama vibhakti in this particular sutra it occupies the initial position of this samasa so we have prati plus su plus agni plus am and then the samasa saudhnya takes place then the pratipadika saudhnya takes place then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and then we get prati plus zero plus agni plus zero and then finally we join them together and make the sandhi necessary and get the form pratyagni when this pratyagni as an output pratipadika becomes part of the sentence it takes the pratyaya su pratyagni is an avyayi bhava samasa so it gets termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha and therefore the su suffix added after pratyagni is deleted by avyayadap supaha and then we get the form pratyagni and it is used in the sentence like pratyagni shalabha patanti the moths are falling towards where fire is so fire becomes the lakshana or the mark of the action of falling of moths in both these examples the question is what is the mark of moths falling what do they do and where do they fall yad uddishya hi gachati tal lakshanam bhavati so this mark in these two sentences is fire and the other important fact is that the moths are also facing it lakshmi agnim lakshi kritya abhimukham patanti they still fly towards the fire now when we say sraghnam pratigata he returned to sraghna even though abhimukha is intended and the word prati is used the third condition namely lakshana is not fulfilled so sugna is not the lakshana of the action of going as the intended meaning is he started to go to mathura and due to the confusion in the directions he returned to sugna when that is the meaning sugna is not the lakshana so the compound does not take place in case of sugna and prati now when we say yena agni stena gata he went by the road where there is fire here fire is the mark of where he went he is also facing the fire but the words abhi and prati are not used in the sentence and so there is no compounding 
And so we have agyena agnis tenagataha. The simple sentence intact. No change or no modification happens. Similarly, Similarly, when we say abhyanka gavaha, pratyanka gavaha, cows who are freshly marked or navangaha, cows are where the marks are put, but the words abhiprati are also used, but there is no facing towards meaning intended. When you say abhyanka gavaha, cows are freshly marked, it doesn't mean that they are facing the village, or they are facing something. So there is absence of the important conditions stated in the sutra and therefore there is no compounding. Next, how we study how the processing of the Avyayabhava Samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras. And we shall also study how this process continues to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that pra output pratipadika behaves in a particular sentence. This is what we shall study next. These are the references. Ashtadhyayi, Samarthanhika, Vakyapadikya, Kashikavritti as well as Samasa Prakarana in Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumadi. Thank you very much.